The first place I ever went to in America was Florida. I loved it. The whole time I was there though, I had no idea how many creepy stories originate from Florida. All you Floridians watching this video, you've been hiding these stories from the rest of us. And as for the rest of you, just wait till you hear some of these. It might even make you think twice about booking that trip to Florida. My name is Danny Burke and this is the Top 10 Scary Florida Urban Legends. I'm magically changing clothes really quickly to say thank you to Inbox Dollars for sponsoring this video. They give cash and gift card rewards for filling out a opinion surveys and watching TV and getting special shopping promotions online. You can get paid for watching TV right now by clicking the link in our description box. You get a $5 sign up bonus just for signing up so make sure you do that today. Thanks again to Inbox Dollars for sponsoring today's video. Starting off at number 10 now we have Bloody Bucket Bridge. This one comes from the town of Wachula. There you can find an old road built over a hundred years ago. To the locals it's simply known as Bloody Bucket Road. Follow that along and you'll find Bloody Bucket Bridge which crosses a narrow waterway that locals say sometimes runs red with human blood. The story goes that after the civil war a freed slave and her husband settled down in the town nearby. She was elderly and took up work as a midwife. It was very tough for her because every day she was reminded of the children that were stolen away from her when she was a slave. Eventually she began to lose her mind because of this. She would suffocate and kill babies that she delivered as they were being born. She would then bury them in the river and dump buckets of blood into the water by the bridge. Everyone thought the babies were just stillborn. By the time people became suspicious and stopped using her as a midwife, it's thought she killed about a hundred babies. She was exiled and spent the rest of her days as a mad woman in the Florida swamps, screaming that she was being haunted by the ghosts of the babies. She always kept a bucket next to her that was said to fill up with ghostly blood. Legend says if you go to that bridge today and wait for a full moon, you can see the water run red with blood. Stay too long though and you may even hear screams coming from the woods. Moving on to number 9 now we have the skunk ape. A number of southern states in the US have the legend of the skunk ape but I think it's most prominent in Florida. Ever since the 1960s and 70s Floridians have been reporting the sight of a giant ape like creature stalking the Everglades. More often than not they don't just see this creature they also smell it. It gets the skunk part of its name from its unbearable odour said to be like methane or rotten eggs. Physical descriptions vary but the skunk ape is said to stand about 7 feet tall and weigh up to 450 pounds. Locals say it lives in alligator caves along with dead animal carcasses. While most scientists have discredited the idea of a giant ape running around Florida, there are many people who swear by it. These days there's even an official skunk ape research headquarters in Ochopee. Researchers collect samples and investigate reports of swamp ape sightings. At the time of recording they've yet to find conclusive evidence and the search continues. At number 8 now we have the killer cloud. Honestly out of all the urban legends that I've talked about on this channel, this is perhaps one of the most unique. In the woods along the Tomoka River on Daytona Beach, a strange pink cloud has been blamed for the disappearance of dozens of people over the years. The cloud was first seen in the 1950s and 60s and is said to appear during the colder months of the year. It's rumoured to devour the flesh off human bodies. Locals have reported finding human bones in the area after the cloud has disappeared. Some say that it's swamp gas or a local fog that covers only a small area. Perhaps the creepiest explanation though is that it's the angry spirit of Chief Tomoki who was cursed for drinking from a sacred spring. Now he devours anyone who can't outrun the pink cloud. Next up number 7 now we have the Tallahassee Witch. In 1889 Elizabeth Bud Graham was buried in the old city cemetery in Tallahassee. The 23 year old was a wife and mother whose life was not overly remarkable. Locals have always found it strange then that her tomb is perhaps the grandest in the whole cemetery. Local legend says the reason is because Elizabeth was a witch. As with Christian tradition, the other graves faced east but Elizabeth faces west, the exact opposite. Her gravestone has a poem by Edgar Allan Poe engraved on it which reads, Ah, broken is the golden bowl, the spirit flown forever. Let the bell toll, a saintly soul floats on a Stygian river. Come, let the burial rite be read, the funeral song be sung, an anthem for the queenliest dead that died so young. A Urge for her, the doubly dead, in that she died so young. Now, some people believe this holds clues to her being a witch. Broken in a bowl is said to refer to her killing a vampire. Doubly dead refers to witchcraft, as a witch must 
be killed twice to die. To this day, locals have reported modern day witches visiting her grave to pay their respects. Coming at number 6 now, we have the Gator Men. I'm sure any of you who are from Florida will know that it's famous for alligators, but have you heard of the Gator Men? Yes, there are allegedly half human, half alligator hybrids that live in Florida's Everglades. Going way back to the 1700s, you can find reports of these creatures. The top half is always said to resemble a human, but by the time you get below the waist, everything changes. They are said to have webbed feet, scales, and tails. Not everything is an even split along the body, though. Witnesses have reported that their teeth are not human like. They say they're jagged and resemble alligator teeth more closely. They're said to be highly intelligent, aggressive, and cunning creatures that travel in groups and even have their own guttural language. Without any recorded sightings, though, the gator men remain swamped in urban legend. Moving on to number five now, we have the Devil's Chair. Legend says that in a graveyard in Casadaga, Florida, is a chair that belongs to the devil himself. It's a wide brick bench that was supposedly built by the devil. Every night at midnight, the devil returns to sit in this chair. It's meant only for him, and if you sit in it, he will have his revenge. Locals say that he whispers evil ideas in your ear while you're in the chair. Ideas that will haunt you forever and send you down a spiral of evil doings that will result in you going to hell, where you can join him forever. Another strange addition to the legend is that if you leave a full, unopened can of beer on the chair and return the next morning, the can will be empty, but still unopened. Somehow. That's all I know. You'll just have to visit and try for yourself if you want to know more. Good luck. Moving on to number four now, we have the Riddle House. This Edwardian house was built in Palm Beach in 1905. From the outside, it looks like nothing out of the ordinary, but its history has attracted paranormal hunters from all over the world. Its original purpose was as a funeral home, housing bodies overnight before their burial. In the 1920s, it was bought by Carl Riddle, who turned it into a home for his family. They were terrorized by spirits of the dead from years gone by. Eventually, one of the Riddle's employees hung himself in the attic room of of their house because he saw no way out of the hard times he had fallen upon. Carl wrote in his diary that after that, the energy in the house changed. Employees heard voices where no one was there. Carl removed the beam from which the man had hung himself, but the hauntings continued. The family were forced to leave. Years later, the house was taken apart brick by brick and moved to the South Florida fairgrounds, and amazingly, people claim those ghosts went with it. They say some evil spirit still lives in the attic, attacking anyone who dares climb the ladder. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the ghosts of the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Built in 1874, this lighthouse started out normal, being passed from owner to owner. That was until it came into the hands of Peter Rasmussen. His spirit is said to have imbued itself with a lighthouse. Now, he was said to be absolutely obsessed with cigars, smoking multiple ones a day. All these years on, staff report smelling cigar smoke years after Peter died. Another legend involves a pair of girls, Eliza and Mary Pitty. They were playing in the nearby waters in the late 1800s while their mother worked on the lighthouse. In a tragic accident, the girls drowned. Staff say their laughter can still be heard from the top of the lighthouse every single night. Next up at number 2 now, we have Spook Hill. In the town of Lake Wales, you can find Spook Hill. Locals will tell you that it's a must see for anyone interested in the paranormal, although you may have already thought that based on the name. Legend says that if you stop your car on the right spot on Spook Hill and put it in neutral, you can experience your car rolling uphill. Most people are happy to just experience it, be a little bit scared and then move on. But for those of you who want to know the creepy side of things, you'll be pleased to know that there is a story meant to explain this. A nearby sign reads, many years ago an Indian village on Lake Wales was plagued by raids of a huge gator. The chief, a great warrior, killed the gator in a battle that created a small lake. The chief was buried on the north side. Pioneer male riders first discovered their horses laboring downhill, thus naming it Spook Hill. When the road was paved, cars coasted uphill. Is this the gator seeking revenge, or the chief still trying to protect his land? And finally, number one now, guys, we have Robert the Doll. Now, I've talked about this doll a lot on this channel, and it never gets any less creepy. In 1906, Robert Eugene Tot was given a doll as a boy in Florida. It was a gift from his nanny, who also dabbled in voodoo. The 40-inch tall doll was made of wood, stuffed with wool, and wore a sailor outfit. This is where it gets confusing. Robert gave up his name to the doll. He just gave it up and started calling himself 
Jean instead. Jean spoke to Robert the doll all the time and swore the doll was real. Eventually, even neighbours began to think that they heard the doll whisper back, change its expression or even move by itself. Some local children once claimed they saw the doll looking out of the top window of the family's home. The family began to think that their son's doll might be possessed. Yeah, I would too. No matter how much they wanted to get rid of the doll though, Jean just wouldn't let go of it. He kept this creepy doll for the rest of his life. These days the doll sits in a glass box at the Fort East Martello Museum. Despite the glass and the years that have passed, even the sight of him creeps some people out. Well, thank you Florida for just being you. I love those stories. If you did too, you'll be pleased to know there's enough for a part two. Or you can let me know where else we should go with the Urban Legends series. Thanks for watching as always guys. My name is Danny Burke and I'll see you all in the next video.